Hello there, generals. So, I decided to look at a bit of propaganda, mainstream propaganda, and, you know, break it up a little bit. So, this is mainstream propaganda of CNN. And we know how CNN, how truthful CNN is. And so, this was like 10 days ago where Major Taylor Green, you know, you know, compares mask wearing to the holo. So, let's look at it, shall we? Let's see if she actually did it. Hmm? Let's see if she actually did it. There's this ongoing feud within the GOP that seems to be escalating now. It's fueled by new comments from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who compared... Yeah, so the feud is between, presumably, they don't mention it, but we know it's between Trump Republicans and the old, crusty weaklings. Mask wearing to the Holocaust. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they... Right. She compares it to what? Wearing a gold star. Not the whole event, but to a specific... Like, this is the beginning of a big event. And it begins with something as innocuous as wearing a gold star or wearing a mask. That's what she's saying, all right? They were definitely treated like second-class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. CNN's Susan... So then she says, oh, look, the slippery slope is that if they keep punishing people and keep taking away your, your stuff, eventually, if it keeps going and it's not stopped and after 10 years or something of this shit, it might get to the point of, you know, that. That type of thing. Might happen. That's what she's saying. Now, she could have said it more clearly. That there was a better way of framing it, but that's pretty much what she's saying. And anyone that's actually trying to interpret what she's saying would agree. Suzanne Malveau walks us through this. As the Senate goes into session this week with little or no chance to passing a bipartisan bill calling for an independent commission investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. And that's why they, well, they didn't pass it. And the reason why they didn't pass it was because you're framing it as an attack in the first place. Instead of having it be a commission on investigating the events around what happened in January 6th, instead it's an, uh, you, the presupposition is an attack. So they're going to say, nope, we don't agree with that characterization, so we're not going to do it. So, too bad. The parties most vocal are taking on each other over the issue as to whether or not Republicans to tell the truth can be honest about not only the current events of the day, but also history as well. Congress... Yeah, but they, they're being honest that they don't agree with your characterization of the event. Do you understand that? Woman Liz Cheney, who was recently ousted in her number three position in the House and has since embraced her new role as the standard bearer for her party, calling out... What the hell does the standard bearer even mean? She's not a standard bearer. She's just annoying, weakling, who is at this point is a Republican, who cares for Democrats. That's what she is. It's called Rhino. Out Trump's lies. She is. Yeah, Trump's lies. According to who? Oh, according to his enemies. You? Okay, nice. Now taking on freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for her recent comments comparing the House's ongoing mass mandate to the Holocaust. Yellow stars. Greene said on the Christian Broadcasting Network show, The Water Cooler, quote, we can look back at a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were... Right, the gold star. And that was followed by what? What, what followed that? Can you think for a second, propagandist? Definitely treated like second-class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And so she's reinforcing the narrative, right? She's reinforcing that narrative. Isn't that what you want? Right? To reinforce the Holocaust narrative? So what's the problem? What's the problem, bruh? She's doing exactly what you guys should want. So... And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. What Jewish... Well, that's the that's issue. That's what wish watched it a little bit. The type of abuse, a.k.a. Um, an abuse to your civil liberties. That, that's what the type of abuse it is. It's just a problem that, what does she mean with type? That's a problem. So what is type? Well, type in this case is just category. 
it's a civil rights abuse or abuse of your rights, you're taking of your rights taken away, etc., etc. Bush groups immediately demanded that Green retract her statement as well as apologize, tweeting this, saying you can never compare health-related restrictions with yellow star. See, this is the problem. You interpret, you label it a health-related restriction. Okay. So what? Who cares? In Green's perspective and her supporters, it's not just a health-related restriction. See, that's a problem. Okay. That's a freaking problem. It's a framing, a framing of just words alone. You know, this is the thing that propagandists have to do: is frame the word. So they're framing the mass as a health-related restriction, but to Major Taylor Green, that's not how it actually is. They see it very differently. Okay, and you should respect that, right? I mean, shouldn't you look at what they're actually trying to say? But no, they don't. They don't actually do that. Cars, gas chambers, and other Nazi atrocities. So well, that's what's supposed to come after the stars, the masks come out. Which comparisons demean the Holocaust and contempt. Well, you're demeaning the mass, so you're demeaning the the problem the the, the problem that you know Major Taylor Green has with mass. Contaminate American political speech. Saturday, Congresswoman Liz contaminate. Interesting word. Is Cheney also weighing in, tweeting this, saying, This is evil lunacy. Cheney. This is some bullshit that I wanna, I'm gonna label it some, some horrible words. So, uh, people don't like evil and people like lunacy, so we're just gonna call it that. Oh, okay, just say, This is bad. Cause this, this is bad, because it's pretty much what you're doing. It's just evil is bad and lunacy is bad, so let me just let me call it that. So, at this point, so instead of an honest will be, This is bad. But a propagandist will say this is evil lunacy. So you use hyperbole. Not that this is bad. This is some hyperbolic thing. This is evil lunacy. Right. This is bad plus 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 plus. Cheney is one of the few Republicans who's calling on her Senate colleagues to support this bill for this independent commission on the January 6th attacks on the U.S. Capitol. But they don't agree with the framing and they don't think it's going to be independent at all because it's not going to be independent. Simple. And it didn't pass. Good job. Most in the Senate, those Republicans saying this is dead on arrival. Chrissy Boris. Mm. Suzanne, thank you so much. Now, after what are deemed very insensitive comments comparing mask mandates. Deemed by who? See, this is the problem with propagandists. They're deemed by who? See, when you, the point of, of using words that have a certain subject attached to them, in this fashion where you take away the subject, is it gives the people in their mind, it gives them this sort of universal quality, where deemed without a specific subject attached to it, it makes it universal. So it's universally deemed this way. If you were to say it is deemed by the Democrats, or it is deemed by the Jewish community, or it is deemed by a specific group, then it loses the universal feel to it. So this is a key thing in propaganda, right? Use words that have a specific subject attached to them, without that subject, so then you get this universal quality. It's to the Holocaust. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't... Yellow stars! By the way, this is also called repeat affirmation. You repeat the same lie again and again and again. You repeat the same goddamn lie a billion times until people finally... Oh, it must be true because look how many times it's repeated. She apologized when speaking to a reporter yesterday. Rather, she doubled down. I'm not gonna apologize to you, because what's, what's the point of that exactly? We shouldn't be having this kind of treatment. No one should be treated like a second-class citizen for saying I don't need to wear a mask or saying that my medical records are my privacy based on my HIPAA rights. And so I stand by all of my statements. I said nothing wrong. And I think any, any rational Jewish person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing mask mandates. What's happening? See it? See, that's the key thing of the framing. What's happening? It didn't stop. We haven't stopped yet. It's still happening. Just like when the yellow stars came out. Let's say you move back to 1930. What is it? When, let's say 1938. It is happening, right? It's happening. Now, the worst didn't arrive there yet. According to the whole narrative, the worst parts hadn't arrived yet. But, still... It was happening. It was in progress. It's the same thing here. Understand that? 
mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. Do you understand though? What it means is fa forcing people to get these things, even though they don't want it to. Why some would be upset and offended by the comment? So that's a stupid question. Why would someone be upset? Who the hell cares if they're offend upset or offended? Who cares? There's a bunch of political hacks out there who are going to be pretending to be upset or offended to score political points, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Who the hell cares? What matters is what is actually being said and dealing with the actual merits of the case. Well, do you understand how people feel about being forced to wear masks or being forced to have to take a vaccine or even have to say that whether they've taken it or not? These are just things that shouldn't be happening in America. This is a free country. Right, so what you're saying is, how about stop dismissing our case? Look, you're just completely dismissing our side, completely like not caring about what we think, what we feel. But somehow, we're supposed to care and feel about these other people. These other people are trying to win political points on us. Yeah, you know, we're supposed to care about and all that on them, right? But we, nobody ever gives a damn about what we think. All right. How the hell is that fair exactly? Like, how the hell is it fair that we're supposed to care everything about other people, but never anyone else cares about what we think? That's a key thing. Uh, and it's obvious that they're not looking at it in her, they're not even trying to look at it from her perspective at all. And that's an issue. Propagandists, of course, know fully well that there are indeed multiple perspectives on something. But they will try to push your perspective as the only one that is uh, possible. The only one which is valid. That's what propagandists do. That's not journalism, that's propaganda. And CNN, clearly not very journalistic. Anita Kumar with us now, White House correspondent and associate editor for Politico. Anita, it is so good to have you. Politico is left wing, by the way, so that's nice. Be back here. So, first of all, um, I want to listen to what Republican Congressman uh, Carlos Jimenez said to Jim Acosta last night. <laughs> Obviously, I disagree wholeheartedly with that, that response. You know, the Holocaust, Holocaust is a tragic event. Uh, she compared it to specifically the gold star, which is then going to be followed by worse shit. That uh, incredibly painful to, uh, to the Jewish community here in the United States and around the world. Six million Jews died because of it. Uh, <laughs> interesting, interesting indeed. Look, so you don't care about what the people who may not want to get, you know, these measures, you know, force on them. You don't care what they feel at all, but absolutely care about what this other community feels. That's a message, right? Only care what this community thinks and feels. Don't care about your own motherfucking supporters. Your own motherfucking supporters think feel like this guy's Republican, right? His own supporters probably feel this way too. Republicans as a whole don't like these mandates being forced on them. But he doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about his own supporters. He cares more about this very, very beloved community. Very beloved by all. Nobody's going to die because we're wearing masks. Nobody's going to die because of a gold star. So just take the gold star. Come on, boy. Nobody's going to die from the gold star. You see, you see, how, how you like that? How you like... Your concerns be dismissed like that. Come on, no one's gonna die from the star. Just wear it. Would you agree with that? Would you be like, oh yeah, that's fine? No, of course not. You look at that as disgraceful. How dare you dismiss my concerns like that? Okay, so don't do that with people who don't want to be forced with, let's say, masks or whatever. Come on. We have Liz Cheney, as uh, Suzanne had said, calling it evil lunacy. We had Republican uh, Adam Kinzinger saying it was absolute sickness. Uh, and then we had Re Representative Jim McGovern in, in a tweet saying this. Representative Green's anti-Semitic language comparing the... It's not anti-Semitic, it's opposite. She's reinforcing the Holocaust narrative, which will only benefit... Which will really benefit Jews. Jews should be for anyone who's reinforcing, right, the, such things such as the narrative. So, like, come on, what's the problem? This is not... She's not an anti-Semite in any way. She is pro-Jewish 100%. Okay? To say otherwise is what's indeed lunacy. The system, systematic murder of six million Jews during the Holocaust to wearing a mask is beyond disturbing. No, to the, to the yellow star. How can you misinterpret it so brazenly a hundred times? Every single person does the same misinterpretation somehow. 
Like it's it's synced propaganda. No, she said the yellow star. The 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 systematic you know stuff comes after that later. Because if you know the whole you know, if you know the whole history thing, you will find out that the stars came first. You understand that? If she's. It's like these people don't understand what chronology is. They talk about history. Oh, you're going to talk about history, but I have no idea what the hell chronology is. Deeply troubled person who needs to apologize and resign at... Uh, yeah, deeply troubled. Yeah, maybe people who are propagandists and should be actually trying to understand what someone is saying. Maybe they are the truly troubled persons. GOP leader, meaning Kevin McCarthy, uh, needs to address her anti-Semitism. She's literally pro-Jewish. Nothing she said was anti-Semitic at all. It is very easily interpreted as being pro Jewish. Come on. Are you getting word, Anita, that there's any indication uh, the uh, leader McCarthy will actually address this or that there will be any consequence for the, the words that she's using? So she, she is being pro Jewish, but a chunk of the Jewish community don't agree with the way in which she's being pro Jewish. So they want her to get punished. And this is universal, a seemingly universal cry to get her punished. How does this look exactly? Like, how does this look to people who are looking at this? Seriously. Like, now you have to be careful on the way that you're pro-Jewish. Again, she's reinforcing the Holocaust narrative. She's being pro-Jewish. Absolutely. Alright? She's pro-Israel. Right? Again. You know, every single position she takes is pretty much pro-Jewish. So it makes no sense to then go and be let, to, to throw like she's anti-Semitic. It's just the most absurd thing ever. She couldn't be even, she couldn't be any more pro-Jewish. Seriously. Well, you're right. We haven't heard from the, from the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. I would suspect that he does not want to talk about this. This is, it feels like one of the same things we've seen over and over again when um, Marjorie Taylor Greene makes these controversial comments, but not just her, when when we've heard- Controversial to who? Other controversial comments. It's, it's this split- Like what? In the party where the Republican party, the leadership of the party doesn't want to get uh, on one side. They don't want to face uh, the- They don't want to go against their own supporters, which is the whole, which isn't that how it's supposed to be? Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Like, seriously? So, what, are you saying that they should go against their own supporters? Which, by the way, they already do that a lot. But should they even do it even more? Really? The backlash from some of these supporters that support her, or even President, former President Trump, who, who supports her. Uh, obviously, she strongly supports former President Trump. It's this same schism in the party that we've been seeing over and over again. I would not expect... A yeah, sure, sure. It's a more, like, hardcore Trump Trumpians versus the old... You know, old class, uh, weakling, you know, conservatives who don't really conserve anything. A lot of Republicans this coming week to to talk about that. You will hear from a lot of Democrats, though, obviously. Because they're what? Political enemies, of course. They're going to use any opportunity they can get to attack. Well, but I mean, between uh, Representative Jimenez, Cheney, Kinsinger, some are certainly coming out. Yeah, there are three, four guys compared to how much the party. The party is like... The whole, all the houses, you know, like, every, uh, how many Republicans are in the House, the Congress? Like, what, 300, 400, possibly? I'm not sure how many, like, maybe 300 are in, the, in, in both houses. So what, oh, four guys are speaking up. Yeah, four guys of, like, 300 to 400 people. Oh, wow. Wow, that's, that's truly a big, big thing. What does this tell you about, really, I, we, we ask it often, but it seems to be... A very fluid issue, the state of the GOP. I mean, is... On some issues, yes. On some issues, no. Is there any indication that Marjorie Taylor Greene, specifically in some of the things she says, is causing a, a larger rift than there has been in the past? Yeah, I mean, she's definitely causing that larger rift. I would... would... This is very wish-wash. She's talking about... She's doing a larger rift. I mean... Okay, who the hell cares? Like... There's going to be disagreements within each party. Like, this is just... Who, like, what does it matter? Oh, there's going to be some a disagreement in the party. Okay, so what? All parties have disagreement in them. Okay? Like, uh, aren't parties supposed to have disagreements in a democratic, liberal system? Like, this is not this is North Korea. Okay, where the freaking party has to be 100% in accordance with the great leader. 
Isn't there supposed to be some sort of rift going on? Like, I don't see why they're talking about this. Like, I don't know. They're talking it in a way like, I don't know. Like, it's a negative thing of some kind. Mention that some of those people that you've talked about, of course, Liz Cheney and others are, you know, those that always are coming out now, right? They're the ones that are. Because they're not really with the Republicans, but they're, you know, just rhinos. They're the Democrats who are in the Republican Party and they'll side with the Re Re Democrats all the time. They side with the mystery media narrative all the time against Republicans. Vocal. They're vocal against her. They're vocal against President Trump. So we haven't seen a huge rift. I mean, if we if we see some of these other leaders coming out, that would be something. But you're that that's an interesting thing. We haven't really seen such a huge rift. We haven't. Isn't it's, 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 it's kind of counter attacks to own. It's kind of like I mean, goes against their own propaganda because they were pushing this idea. That, oh wow, there's massive rifts going on. And then, uh, well, actually, the leaders haven't really done anything. So actually, it's not a big rift. Huh? Interesting. Kind of propaganda is kind of inconsistent there. Hmm. I I I'll get the propagandists to do a better job on that. That's for sure. Don't, don't do that. Don't freaking counter signal the propaganda. All right. You're exactly right. This is exactly what the part. Yeah, she's reading her script. Uh oh. Did she just counter signal the propaganda? Oh no 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 no. Party does not want. Every time there's a statement like this, every time there's a rift like this, it takes the Republican. A tiny tiny rift message away from what they want it to be opposing president uh, biden's uh, policies his tax tax increase proposals his spending plans other things that they don't agree with that they think voters might care about so that they do care about while well, they don't give a damn about major utility greens comparing freaking math to yellow stars it's not something that's gonna shock them like oh wow wow she's comparing freaking math to yellow stars and then saying that there might be a slippery slope to worse shit just like happened you know, 70 years ago. Oh, wow, that's going to totally shock her supporters and supporters of the Republican Party, right? Right. Look, obviously, only people who are malicious in their intent and are purposely trying to misinterpret her statements or try to interpret her statements in the worst way possible are going to, like, go, you know, go crazy about this, obviously. Like, you know. It's also interesting how, how the it's propaganda again because they didn't even bring on a single person who could possibly disagree with this framing or this interpretation. Like, could it, isn't, there's no way there's not a single person anywhere that they can find that will be like, actually, you could interpret her statements to be very different to what you're trying to interpret it as. But nope, oh, see nothing of that. Uh, you know, whatever does happen with this particular comment, it is continuing that rift and it's taking the party away from what they want it to be, what they want their agenda to be about. Is there a sense? Well, really, if these uh, rhinos will shut the fuck up and will go away, then the party would, they, it will literally be ignored. It literally will be ignored and it will be no quote unquote rift, right? There wouldn't be actually any rift at all on tiny irrelevant issues that exist. The Republican Party should rift on, indeed, okay, what should, about this policy? What about uh, how are we going to have this stance on this issue or that issue? You know, uh, go, going crazy about some freaking innocuous statements. That is, you know, that, that's an issue which the Republicans have to resolve. And the way to do that is to kick out these rhino types. Is it all that perhaps um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is trying to fill the void that was once the voice of President Trump. He said a lot. Yeah. President Trump, the greatest friend that Israel has had in a long time. A very long time. Yes, that guy. A lot of things that many deemed insensitive. Some that were outright. Insensitive, whatever that means. Right, wrong, particularly when it. Wrong, according to who? Me. When it came to COVID, particularly when it came to the 2020 election. Um, but. What wrong means is it disagreed with our propaganda. That's what they mean by wrong. There's something that we have a, a big problem with all these words is that we have different meanings. So like, oh, wrong, the truth, or any of this stuff. And when you look at propaganda, you don't take it at face value. It's not wrong. Wrong doesn't mean that it's like incorrect in reality. It means it goes against our propaganda. Because this goes by the definition of propaganda, which is my truth. Your propaganda is pushing your version of the truth. So, of course, something which goes against your version of the truth would be, within the framework of your propaganda, wrong. Right. But that's not the way that, if you're not within, if you're not a propagandist of that order yourself, or you're not a follower of that propaganda, or whatever is pushing propaganda, then the way you should read it is that way. That, okay, it's something that disagrees with their propaganda, with their vision, etc.
the words are getting more brazen. Is there a sense that perhaps she's trying to fill that void because he does not have a Twitter account anymore and he doesn't have a microphone in front of his face 24-7? Right. <sighs> the way that they talk about Trump is just, I don't know. I get a weird feeling about it. It's like, it's like demeaning. I don't know. Like, I don't know what way to, to describe it, but you get this weird feeling when I talk about him. I think you call it demeaning. This demeaning thing of like, oh yeah, he, he doesn't have a Twitter account anymore. He doesn't have a freaking yeah, like snarky, snarky, the snarky thing. Oh, he doesn't have a microphone twenty four hours um, in front of his twenty four seven in front of his face anymore. You know, the snarky, snarky comments. Right. I mean, you're exactly right. You are hearing from people that that is an issue that they think that she is trying to do that. Her and a few others, you know, Congressman oh. Matt Gates. Who? Again, they constantly use weasel words. There's some people who think uh, who 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 exactly again stop using these stop with these weasel words because why is it important for us to know this because what if it's just another propagandist of the same organization it's just another propagandist okay who cares why is it why should I be surprised why should I completely not assume that your fellow propagandists are going to have the same message that you do. Again, one part of propaganda, it has to be consistent. Other propagandists have to push the same message. So, of course, your fellow propagandists are going to have the same motherfucking message. Of course. You know? ...to Florida. Obviously, the two of them had a rally that, you know, they support President Trump. Um, they're out there talking about him uh, and supporting him. And look, he's supporting them back. This is what we're going to continue to see over the next, you know, coming months and into next year, into the midterm. All right, General. So that was the propaganda analysis. Analyze a bit of propaganda. And you can see the amount of things they use here, the way they frame stuff. So they do a lot. Of, they do reframing. They do reframing. A lot of reframing. I really, like, I think majority of the, the core of the propaganda is reframing. They begin with reframing, and they even end with reframing. Because they, they try to frame this issue around, oh, well, she, around, instead of it being she's against his mandates, now it's about, oh, she's just trying to fill a role. She's just trying to be like uh, the new Trump. She's trying to fill the role that Trump used to have. Like She's not she's not be honestly against these measures, but she's just like, you know, or she doesn't honestly, you know, um, you know, she doesn't honestly think that these freaking mandates are... Civil, civil liberty uh, problems and are really serious she doesn't actually you know go against the mandates because she thinks they're wrong no it's all about her just making these statements to just to troll around and larpish trump so that's a reframing at the end, of the end so a lot of reframing going on the propaganda there's a lot of weasel words going on to try to um, generate a consensus feeling a lot of ambiguous terminology being used, so again, using certain terms with other subjects that should be attached to those terms to make them sound like they're universal or whatever. So, you know, a repeated affirmations have have a bunch of propagandists, have a bunch of people who disagree with them, right? Spotlight the people who agree with them and only show those people, completely disregard anyone who may be against what their narrative is about. So again, repeat affirmations, make it look like everyone is, everyone is agreeing with them, right? Make it seem like there's no dissent. And so this is what they do to, you know, cut off the propaganda. There's probably a whole bunch of other stuff that could also be read into this. But those are the most obvious propaganda techniques being used in this clip. Okay? This one clip has this many propaganda techniques being used. Truly impressive. Again, the, the biggest indicator is how there's literally nobody, nobody disagrees. You don't show a single person who disagrees in this clip. Which, like, uh, how is that possible? You know, again, I can see how they interpreted this thing because of the, her words were rather loose. Like she used rather loose terms, and she did this little slippy way. She said that this is exactly the type of thing, right? And so they, I can see how someone can misinterpret what she means for type, like, you know, type, aka type of what, right? What kind of type is she talking about? Is she talking type in the sense of it's the same severity? Right? 
or is she talking about the category wherein where these things are at? These are two different things entirely, right? The severity and the actual category of what you're talking about, two different things. You can consider mask mandates, whatever the hell, or vaccine mandates to be in the same category as, let's say, um, putting a yellow star. You can consider uh, uh, the government trying to punish people who don't follow these mandates to be the same thing as, let's say, you're getting boycotted. You, you can't buy and sell stuff. You can't move around. Right? You, you're, getting, you're going to get stuck into a ghetto, ghetto or something. You can interpret right, as being, oh, look, it's the same type category of thing. It doesn't mean that, now, in this category, there's a spectrum of severity. Sure, there's a spectrum of severity. Some things are on a lighter side, and some other things are on a much, much more severe side. So, sure, the mass and the yellow stars, the gold stars, are on the lower side of severity. But then the camps and the chambers and the freaking getting put in the ghettos and all this stuff is on the far more severe side. But that's the pro Again, so a propagandist will look at, huh, she said type. How do I funnel my target audience to, or my target, to interpret the word type specifically in the way that I want in order to make a whole thing about it? Well, they do what they did, right? They just get a bunch of people together who agree with that interpretation, right, of type. Okay, that's really the most important word of what she said, type. That's what the whole thing hinges around. The way you... The only way that their interpretation works is if you interpret type to mean equal severity, right? Equal category, I guess, and equal severity, but the equal severity of it being bad or, you know, that's the only way you can do it. But if you interpret the proper way, which is, oh, it's the same category of stuff, okay, perfect. And that the reason why the interpretation is superior, by the way, is because, again, it matches, it matches the rest of her persona. Major Jelly Green is someone who takes these freaking things very seriously and she knows about a slippery slope. It's very obvious she knows about a slippery slope. All Republicans, all conservatives know about a slippery slope. Like, the ones who keep trying to say that it's like, oh, it's a fallacy. I'm not, I have not heard right-wingers ever say that slippery slopes are fallacies. It's the left-wingers who try to do that. So, the slippery, idea of a slippery slope is something which is a right-wing thing. And you see that in the, in the rhetoric. And you saw it in her rhetoric. So it means you look at who she is, what she believes in, and, and what part, what you know, and what she's part of. You can interpret her thing properly as that. But a propagandist will not care about that. They'll rather care about what's the interpretation that I want people to think about, so that I can more easily hammer them with the propaganda. That's what it is about. You know. And so, when you have people, you have people, how can they have people to believe these insane stuff? These insane things? Simple. Because they're watching this type of content, propaganda, all the time. They're constantly watching this propaganda, right? And the problem that, that arises is that by watching the propaganda all the time, they get the idea that everyone, like, that they don't never hear any dissenting opinion. They never hear any, even the way things are framed, Right? They never hear, they, they're never really aware that there's other frame, fr ways of framing it. There's never a way, there's other ways of interpreting it. So, once they're coded to frame and interpret things in a specific way, because all they've been taught, guess what? That's what you're going to do for every single issue. Every single statement that you say is going to be interpreted in the same way that these people see the propagandists they love to watch um, do it. That's how it is. Right? Because they've been taught, again, that that's the only way to frame it properly. Otherwise, you're evil, you're a heretic, you're whatever. You know, they called, they called her statements evil lunacy. And I guarantee you that any interpretation of her statements that does not bear that result out, that she's an evil lunatic, is itself also probably part of the evil lunacy. So it's, you're an evil lunatic for daring to interpret her statements differently. So, that's how it is. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty nasty, but, you yeah. know. And again, she's pro-Jewish in every single way. Pro-Jewish, okay. She's validating, she's not demeaning the Holocaust, she's validating it, okay. 
That's what she's doing. She's validating it. It's like, look, it started with the stars and then it, and it ended up with that. And that same could happen again. That's a validation of the Holocaust. That's not a, the meaning of the Holocaust. Okay? But the problem is, again, that you must think in, you must think the way she does, in a sense, and say, wait, but she considers these mandates to be very, very, you know, serious. She doesn't take it lightly. Just like we wouldn't take the yellow stars lightly, right? Or should not take the yellow stars lightly. Well, the same way she doesn't t take the mandates lightly. But the key thing is she doesn't take the mass mandates lightly, nor does she take the yellow stars lightly. You, on the other hand, take the yellow stars seriously, but don't take the mass mandates seriously. For whatever reason. That's the difference. That's the difference indeed. But, you know, going about this propaganda, even this piece of propaganda probably takes forever to, like, decipher every single thing. It takes forever. So, this is, you know, this is the thing with propaganda. It's just so, there's so many, you, you try to condense as much, you know, stuff into one thing. So then if you were to actually, you know, deconstruct it and bring it out and get all the pieces out, it would be an infinite list of things. Right? So... That's the difficulty. That is indeed the difficulty. Anyways, that is all. And see.